I'm very excited to be here and, and, and talk about this. I am the lawyer here, and, and usually lawyers bring the bear of bad news, but I don't want you to look at it like that. I want you to look at this as an opportunity. Um, this, is, this is the main theme that I want people to walk away with is to be proactive. This is about protecting your assets as business owners, as property owners. So what, what the focus of my, my discussion today is going to be on liability and risk management. As a property owners, um, you know, you have, you have an obligation to, to do a reasonable investigation of your property. That is the, the standard of care. What does that mean? That means you need to do inspections from time to time or when it's necessary on your property. That's a given. That's been the law in California and in many states for, for years. Now, in 2010, there was a seminal case that dealt with earthquakes and retrofitting. And this is the case that kind of changed and advanced that law to go beyond what people thought the law really was. And that case is known as Myrick versus Mastani. It came out in 2010, so it's pretty recent, even though we're almost a decade after that. But that dealt with the San Simeon earthquake that took place on December 22, 2003. And that was an unreinforced masonry building um, that actually had undertaken some, some work um, over the years. But what happened, there was, there was a bad earthquake and two people died. The owners of that building in 1989 received notice that the building needed retrofitting. And typically what happens is, is the, the municipalities will give owners some time to do the retrofitting because it's not necessarily a small price. And if you're a small mom and pop shop, it could take some time to build up the coffers to do these repairs. So that's essentially what, what happened. They received this notice and Unfortunately, there was an earthquake and two people died. Uh, the, when the case went up to the appellate court, it was at the trial level and then went up to the appellate court, and the appellate court reaffirmed the standard of reasonable care, meaning you need to either know or you have reason to know that there are problems with the property. And in this case, the owners did. They received notice from the local municipality that there was problems with the building. And while they were maybe building up the coffers to do that, they didn't, they didn't perform the retrofitting in time, unfortunately. So as a defense, they said, well, hey, I got this notice. It said that I didn't need to comply until 2018. Can you imagine? So they basically got a notice 20 years before approximately, and again, it was extended a, a couple times, but they said, hey, I don't have to comply with this, so we didn't, we didn't breach any standard of care. The court said, no, no, no. You are a property owner, you are on notice of this, and you must, take, you must be proactive. So basically, when you're a property owner and you receive these notices, and you don't make the repairs, it's almost like playing Russian roulette. You, everyone says the earthquake is going to happen. We don't know when it is, and God forbid it doesn't happen beforehand, but in this case, it did happen. And, and the court said that it doesn't matter. You cannot use that as a defense. You were on notice of this. What does that also mean? What does that also tell us? Um, these cases are very fact-driven cases, so it's, it's done on a case-by-case -case basis. But there are other ways that property owners and business owners can find out about their, their property. One is through the refinancing process. One is through the purchase process. You have to go through disclosures. You have to go through due diligence and investigation. And what happens if something comes up during that process that a court could find, hey, you reasonably knew. You reasonably knew that there were some problems here. You had a, an engineer out here and you didn't inspect. Now, we don't have necessarily case law on that issue, but if you take the precedent from Myrick, it can easily be extrapolated to those kind of cases. So these are the things that, that need to 
that, that, that property owners and business owners need to be thinking about when, when they're, they're trying to protect the property. And the overriding principle behind this is, is not to protect the property, but the, the courts and the governmental agencies are here to protect life and to prevent injury. And that is the overriding issue not property. Property is secondary. That's the way the courts and that's the way the local municipalities and the governments view these things. So, I mean, Evan, Evan brought up some great points in his, in his speech about the costs of, of these things. So think about it when you have property owners um, who are making renovations, who are doing repairs, who are doing tenant improvements because a new tenant comes in. You know, these are all opportunities for them to, to inspect, to upgrade the buildings and to prevent this kind of of Russian roulette, as we can as we call it, because you know we're, there, there's been so many reports out there these days that we definitely know that something is coming down the pike. Oh, I was supposed to hit that next button. I'm sorry. Oh no, I did it. Oh, good. There we go. Someone did it for me. Fantastic. Um, so we we all know that that these are these are opportunities to do that and i know that there's some governmental agencies here too you know the municipalities the municipalities are are designed to um, provide some minimum standards to go out and inspect well they need to enforce these standards now there is governmental immunity but how far does that go Governments don't have necessarily absolute immunity all the time. If they establish these laws and don't enforce them and something happens, there could be an argument that they have some responsibility. So it's not just the property owners, it's not just the business owners. Now getting to the business owner side of things, you know, you don't necessarily have to be an owner of property. You could you could be a business that is residing in a long-term lease in a uh, unreinforced masonry structure or soft structure or anything like that, and you may have 100 employees. Did you do due diligence? Did you check the building to make sure that this is a, a good building for, for your employees? Is it safe? Now, you might not have the ability to make repairs, but what you do have is the ability to contact the owner and say, did you? and to conduct some kind of due diligence to trigger this obligation to make sure that, that the, the life is being protected. And that's basically what the Myrick and Mastani court um, came down to, to, uh, to hold. And, and that principle will carry, and I think that as we see over time, these things will happen. When I first started practicing a little over 20 years ago, um, I was at the tail end of the, the Northridge, Northridge earthquake litigation. And during that time, there was a lot of construction um, you know, going on and uh, there was a lot of dovetailing the, the, the causation of damage. And some of it was relating to building and some of it was relating to earthquake. But because of the insurance issues, a lot of people um, smartly, a lot of lawyers smartly made it a construction issue because they knew that there was insurance there. So what, it, what, what happened out of that? I think that the building codes started to become better suited and, and more, more retrofitting requirements and earthquake preparedness became more um, uh, uh, applicable in these, in these code sections and throughout litigation and made people more aware of what's going on here. Just to give you some examples, um, there, are, there are a couple governmental codes that um, have come down. There's the Health and Safety Code 1961, uh, uh, 161 that, si that basically says that the cities and counties may assess earthquake hazard and identify buildings that need retrofitting. These are usually focused on unreinforced masonry buildings that we just talked about. And Evan showed you a picture of the ones, for example, in Portland. Um, there's the wood frame soft story buildings and welded steel frame buildings. So if you know, if you have clients or you have constituents or whatever the case is, these are the type of buildings that, are, that can be targeted by the local municipalities. Um, and if the, government, if the governmental agency deems them hazardous, that evidence could come into play. Interestingly, when you're in, when you're in court, a lot, of, a lot of evidence that you may not think is applicable could be applicable. 
hypothetical situation could come into play. You, you are a building owner. You, need, you have noticed, hey, I need to retrofit. But instead of retrofitting, you do, you do unit upgrades. You do something else. And you spend fifty to $100,000 on those. And you don't do any, any retrofitting. And it turns out that there's an earthquake. And God forbid people get hurt or, pro or there's property damage. And, and basically, what happens in those situations is the, the, um, that evidence can come in. That evidence you chose to do to upgrade the building to make it look nice but not, not protect the people who are in it, that could be a problem. So that's something that you, you ought to think about. I, I know I only have a few more minutes to go. So I want to get, I, I wanna get into the, the, the cost benefit of the analysis. And this is something that, that I know Evan touched upon. But there's the, on the one side, there's the cost of retrofitting. And on the other side, there's the, there's the exposure, the liability that, that you have. And what a lot of people, a lot of people are reticent to do the, to do the, the retrofit because of the costs. But what people forget and business owners forget is that not only could you be held for liability for the property damage or, or God forbid, death or injury, but there's business interruption. And, and, and if it takes two years to, to reconstruct the building or, or it takes a lot of time where you're losing business for months, that's a big problem. And does that exposure outweigh the, the cost of retrofit? More than likely it does because of the way the, the laws are set up these days. There's attorney's fees that are factored in. There's a lot of statutory codes that allow for these things and really drive up the cost. So, so if you can, you know, be proactive. Tell your clients, have your contractors come out and, and, and take a look and have your engineers do this because this is the way of the future and this is what is going on now. Um, if I have a few minutes, I can take a few questions if anybody has any. Um, if not, I have one minute. How about that? Yes. Good afternoon. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Uh, my question is, Good afternoon. Thanks for coming. My name is Johnny Sharp. I'm with Peak Finance Commercial Lender. Here's my question. Uh, when you introduce, they gave a lot of different areas of specialty. So is it that your firm covers all these different grounds of specialty, or which one do you specialize in? I specialize in, in most of the business aspects. So I specialize in, in construction, corporate, insurance, um, I've done. I've had employment cases, intellectual property cases, um, real estate. I do construction. We do all the time. Um, my emphasis is is on insurance and construction, and that is throughout the country because I have licenses in in multiple states. I have familiarity, and I can litigate in most of those states. If it's of a transactional nature, which a lot of times it is, I can go to different states and evaluate those issues and 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 opine. Um, to my clients about those those issues. Thank you. Sure. And I just I just might add on on top of the liability issues, you know, and this is another point that Evan, you know, appropriately touched upon are the banks. The banks you want to be able to show that you can protect their asset too because if they're lending on it, they're probably they they may even have more money down than than you do. So that's something it's another aspect why being proactive is so important. So I want to I want to thank you for your time. I'll be here afterwards if you guys have any questions. Thank you.